Are you scared of running out of cash in these uncertain times? And do you want to learn to manage it the right way? If so, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Cecil. I'm a financial coach for female entrepreneurs who want to survive and keep their business alive during uncertain times. In this video, I'm sharing seven step process how to manage cash flow like a boss so that you have cash flow clarity, control, and confidence in order to avoid business failure. These are the exact steps that I have taken to help my 13 clients in last three weeks who are doing revenue range from 40,000 to 40 million pounds. So wherever you are in this business journey, this will work for you. So let's dive in. Step number one is to review your expenses for the last 12 months because you want to be in a position to find out how much cash do you need to survive for the next six months and this is a seven step process. Okay, so let's dive in. So in this example for Mega Profit Limited, you can see here the business has incurred 212,000 cost for the last 12 months. So in a pre-COVID scenario, the business will have to pay a cash of 106,000 in the next six months. Pretty scary, right? And assuming that you're not going to make any more sales for the next six months, there will be no cash coming in. It is pretty scary thing. So what we're trying to achieve here is how do you manage cash in the next six months? What do we do from here? So what I want you to do next is I want you to go through your top 10 expenses. I want you to categorize the expenses into a descending order your highest to lowest because your highest expenses are your biggest risk in this example for mega profit limited the top 10 expenses are these ones and these account for 92 percent of of the cost so now the question is that what do you do next and how do you take this information and and manage your cash for the next six months so let's move on to step number two step number two is to separate the expenses that you're going to pay in the next six months into two types so what you're going to do next is you're going to separate the expenses into fixed and variables by doing that you have further clarity on the cash outflow because you are going to adopt a different strategy of how you handle fixed cost and variable cost. The fixed costs such as rent and salaries and uh, the variable costs are those costs that you buy more when your business is growing and your business is shrinking you buy less of that. So you're going to adopt a different strategy. In this business you can see here that out of 106,000 94,700 are fixed cost and 11,623 are variable cost. Now you can see here that the exposure the business has an, into two types and the fixed costs are the most uh, biggest risk in any business. So you might want to think about, oh, I don't want to spend any of the 11,600 in the, in the next six months because my business is literally about to shut down and uh, that's maybe a scenario in your business now by having this clarity of between fixed and variables you are going to adopt a different strategy of how we handle the, and the expenses that you're going to pay in the next six months now what we do from here let's take it to step number three step number three is to get rid of variable cost in your business variable costs are costs that you buy more when your business is growing and your business is shrinking and you buy less of that so it's, for, it's easy for you to deal with at, at the earliest opportunity because it will take you less time and energy to do so so that you can concentrate on the biggest expenses which are the fixed cost having said that you just don't want to cut all the variable costs straight away you want to be maintaining good working relationship with your suppliers because you don't know for how long this pandemic is going to last you're going to need them in a few months time so one of my clients he approached his marketing course he, he was paying thousand pound a month and he said look i can only afford to pay 200 pound a month and uh, because there's no income coming in for the foreseeable future 
and I know you rely on this income to put food on the table for your family I want to support you and I want you to help you and, and, and can you please help me as well at this really difficult point in time and they both agreed and it worked out for them so maybe you could adopt something similar in your business so let's say that in this example mega profit limited let's say this business has a pre-covid uh, cash outflow exposure 11,623 pounds and let's say the business had negotiated well and while still maintaining really good working relationship with the suppliers now the gas exposure that is going to uh, go out in the next six months for variable cost categorically is 3200 that's a massive saving of 8400 something that goes straight to your bottom line as a profit as less expense and hence the gas less gas outflow from your business so so step by step we'll be building a proper a process how you save cash in a business so that your cash required to survive for the next six months will go down so that's step number three step number four is to negotiate fixed cost with relevant parties you want to be very careful of how we handle fixed cost negotiation because you have a contractual obligation with relevant parties so have a conversation with your employees regarding salaries maybe ask them to take a 20 percent or 30 percent pay cut or maybe ask them to work three days a week or two days a week or four days a week instead of five days a week depending on what your business can afford at this point in time and that's crucial and similarly have a conversation with your landlord regarding the rent pay maybe ask them to defer the rent for the next six months or, or maybe give you did some discount for the next six months one of my clients he did just that he managed to save 50 percent rent for the next six months and that's so significant for him and and if you are running an online business then you don't have to worry about paying rent that's really good for you but if you have brick and mortar business then yes you do have to pay rent so have a good to all the list here with all uh, fixed costs and uh, have a conversation with the relevant parties and see how much you can save and whatever values that you need to pay and update it in column K so that you have a new value or new cost that you need to pay for your fixed cost. In this scenario for mega profit limited here we can see here that this business has original um, Pre-COVID scenario, 94,700 pounds to pay from fixed co for fixed cost, and uh, now it dropped to 72,426. Now the biggest drop is actually in the rent, uh, from 20,591 pounds to 10,296, which is a 50% drop, which is a 50% discount for the next six months. So, to go through this exercise and uh, and and find out how much you can save. Now you can see here that instead of the business has to pay 106,341 for the next six months the business only needs to pay 3,200 plus 70,340 roughly 76,000 pounds uh, in the next six months and that's a quite a significant drop that the cash you need to find to pay for the next six months do you have fixed costs in your business that you can negotiate write yes or no in comments below step number five is to take advantage of government support speak to your accountant speak to your hr person speak to your payroll department and find out what are your options what can you claim when can you claim what's the process when can you get hold of cash so that you can pay the suppliers on time government has provided support in terms of impl covering employees salaries not having to pay business rates the VAT being deferred to 2021 there are facilities for government grants and loans so speak to your accountant and find out what are your best options let's say in this scenario for this mega profit limited so the business has a cash outflow of 72,426 this is after negotiating with the suppliers okay so now the government has provided let's say 80% of employee salaries and so it 80% of 45,833 pounds is 36667 I know that 
the gov uh, as a business, you only get further payments of the employees that you cannot keep them in the payroll. For the sake of simplicity here, they just go with the numbers here, okay? This video is not about furlough payments. And let's also say that the, uh, the, the business doesn't have to pay the business rates here. Let's also say that the government provided a facility or grant of 25,000 pounds. Now, there's a cash inflow of 70,048 pounds. Now, if you do the maths, So the variable cost revised after negotiating with the suppliers, the fixed cost after negotiating with the suppliers plus the government uh, facility, government cash input into your business. And this accounts for 2579, which is this one. Now what you're saying is that instead of 106,341 pounds that you had to pay, when you started the process, now you dropped to 2,579 pounds. Now I know you'll feel much lighter. So that's the step number five. Step number six is to seek for help from the bank. Once you've gone through the process of revising or negotiating with the fixed cost, the variable cost, and then having spoken to your accountant, to your lawyers, to your HR department, to your payroll department, and then identify that how much you can claim and when can you get hold of cash. And then you want to have a conversation with the bank about the shortfall or you want to have a cushion so that you are covered. If some of the variables that in here, it doesn't happen for whatever reason, then you still have a cushion. So when you can go to the bank with level conviction and, and state that, look, for my fixed overheads from 94,000, I've reduced to 72,000 pounds. From my variable overheads from 11,600 to 3,200, I'm being responsible here. So this is a very crucial situation for me in my business. Can you please help and provide me a overdraft facility or a loan facility of some amount so that I can cover my business. Just remember, you put your blood, sweat, taste, everything into this business. So you don't want to be in a situation that you're gonna to have to let it go. So you want to save your business. So have a conversation with the bank about the shortfall. If something doesn't happen here, this according to plan, then you have a cushion to play with. So in this scenario, so 3,200 plus 70,426 plus 70,040 plus if you get a, a 15,000 pound at overdraft facility from the bank. Then you have a cushion of 12,421 pounds. You have more cash in the business bank account. If something uh, doesn't happen as you expected, you still have some cushion left. And that is so crucial in terms of surviving in the business. That's step number six. Okay, so we come to the end of steps. So you done really well keeping up to this far. So step number seven is preparing cash flow contingency plan based on worst case scenario, most likely scenario, and a best case scenario. Because the fact is, we don't really know what's going to happen in a few months' time. And just because you have negotiated with the suppliers today, that doesn't guarantee that will happen in a few months' time because situation may change in a few months time at both ends or at either ends. So you won't be in a situation that you prepare a worst case scenario report and you also have most likely scenario report and a best case scenario report. So in this example for Mega Profit Limited you can see here that the, the revised variable cost is 3200 fixed cost 70,000 pounds. The government facility expected is 73,000 pounds and bank has provided overdraft facility of 15,000 pounds. If this happens, there will be a cash in hand balance in the business of 12,421 pounds. And, and this is assuming that the, the business are with zero balance, there is no sales, there is no cash coming in into the business, okay? So let's say that the business will receive 50,000 pound instead of 25,000 pound government grant. 
Now the bids will have a cash flow or cash in hand balance of 37,000 pounds. Now you might well say actually I don't need to have overdraft facility of 15,000 pounds from, from the bank and pay admin fee because if I know that I'll get 50,000 pounds then I don't need this. You see the how the numbers in the business and changes your commercial decisions then you might say actually I, I just need to get a bit rid of this you still have 20,421 pounds cash in hand balance at the end of six months so by doing this exercise then you know that you will have cash flow clarity control and confidence in your business so that I believe that you'll be in the best position to find out how much cash do you need to survive for the next six months and that's a crucial question right now. If you got value from this video, you like it and share it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Your comments are my oxygen, so please don't forget to comment below. I respond to them all. And I'll see you on the next one.